meeting is being recorded. Ah, <laughs> as you as you can tell, it's a, the meeting is now being recorded. At any rate, um, yeah, welcome. This is a, an activity of the uh, Abdus Salam International uh, Center for Theoretical Physics, uh, based in Trieste. Uh, we've had this optics college uh, for for many many years, dating back to the times of uh, Galliano Donardo. Um, and, uh, and it's always been in person and then the pandemic came, it's been annual. Uh, it's a wonderful activity. It, uh, we've changed the topic every year. And, uh, and so we've, we've had lots of, we've made lots of friends. It's uh, uh, people from uh, many countries, usually uh, at least three dozen countries uh, per year have, uh, have been represented at the college. Uh, so this year is, um, Going to be on lidar applications and theory of lidar. Uh, lidar is, is very important. Is you're gonna you're gonna hear from uh, Joe and, and other uh, speakers tomorrow, but it um, but it uh, it's a remote sensing a method that actually has a lot of applications and, and very important for the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Uh, and I think it's uh, in this very abbreviated college. Uh, you're really in for a treat because you're going to learn from the experts. Um, and so I, anyway, we'll get on to that uh, a little bit later. Um, I'm going to show you the uh, program. Uh, if I share my screen. Uh, this may be, <laughs> okay, snooze. All right. So uh, if you see this, this is the, this is the program we've got. Um, so today is a special day. Today is the International Day of Light. And uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna have three speakers talking about um, sort of best practices in a number of areas that I think are very important for us. Uh, one is in in, in outreach, uh, and gender equality or equity in Pakistan, uh, and this applies everywhere in the world. So, and Rana Ashraf will be talking about that. Yeah. Uh, then. Uh, John Freddy Barrera Ramirez from Colombia. We'll be talking about optical encryption and optics in general in Colombia. Uh, and then our own Humberto Cabrera here at ICDP will be talking about the various research opportunities at ICDP um, uh, in our optics lab. And so the optics lab is something that has uh, grown uh, uh, in recent years. It's um, it actually is it's uh, become a, a very vibrant vibrant uh, research uh, laboratory, uh, and Umberto is going to tell us all about that. But I I, I want to plug uh, one organization in particular, and that's SPIE, the International uh, Society for Optics and Photonics, for having enabled us to really start the research laboratory activities here at ICDP, which we, we didn't have on campus uh, these past years. So we have it here on campus and it's it's a wonderful opportunity for career development. At any rate, I won't steal Humberto's thunder. He's gonna talk about that. Uh, then tomorrow, this this is an online activity. So we, we're we um, <clears throat> trying to keep it light. Uh, the, the unusual start time, 5 p.m. Uh, Central European summer time, uh, is try to try to make it available across the globe, uh, including in Latin America and in the Far East. So at any rate, some people have a little better uh, times than others, but this is, this is our compromise. And, uh, and really we're concentrating on what we think are, are really interesting uh, lectures for you to, to get a sense for what's going on uh, with LIDAR. So you'll see uh, Joe Shaw, who you, you just heard, uh, We'll be talking tomorrow on LIDAR for autonomous vehicles and atmospheric LIDAR, and then we'll move Wednesday uh, to insect and fish LIDAR, which is my, my thing that's really uh, intriguing me, uh, and photon counting compressive LIDAR from John Howell uh, at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. And John Howell, uh, for those who may not know, is the president of the uh, International Commission for Optics. Um, and then we'll have... Uh, Randall Babbitt uh, talking about coherent LIDAR and digital holography on um, uh, Thursday. And then we have some time for some short talks and those short talks are from you. So I'm gonna be uh, getting together with some of our uh, our other organizers and we'll 
we'll be sending out some notes to to you, the participants, to see uh, if, you, if you'd like to give a give a talk. You've all some of you send in research abstracts. So, at any rate, we're going to get to that. Um, all right. So that's generally the way it's going to work. It's four days. It starts today and and ends uh, on Thursday. So uh, the other thing I'd like to do is uh, just mention this. So I'm going to. Okay, so uh, today is the International Day of Light, um, 2022. Uh, it's been going on since uh, 2018. Um, and the International Day of Light was, uh, well, I'll just slip, go to the next slide. It was really a, uh, it's a way to do what the Year of Light did in 2015, namely to raise awareness of, important of light, importance of light-based technologies. Uh, for many uh, challenges we face in society. And, uh, you know, we've reached uh, many people in, in many countries. <laughs> and over the years, it's really been wonderful. This year is no exception. Uh, many, uh, many wonderful activities. Uh, and, and some of you uh, here also have uh, submitted activities. This activity is, is part of our celebration. Um, so at any rate, it's, it's a way to keep this going because uh, optics, as many of you know, is an enabling, uh, uh, light sciences are really enabling technologies and, uh, you know, there's a lot that uh, they can do to, to make this world a, a better place to live. So um, uh, some of the impact over the uh, four international days that we've had so far, uh, you can see quite a few activities, 1900 events in 103 countries uh, and worldwide, meaning global events. And there, the various, uh, you can see on the, on the right, uh, they, they can break down variously from scientific, science themed conferences to uh, citizen science and competitions, et cetera. So anyway, everything is game. Uh, it's a chance to uh, not only celebrate science, but also art. Uh, anything or light to philosophy, anything where light comes in. And you can see uh, our, our steering committee uh, members at the bottom, uh, these are organizations which, ha which have been contributing to this campaign ever since we started. And uh, so many thanks to, many thanks to them. Uh, and uh, here's a, just a few of the uh, things that, uh, you know, the, the technologies that really uh, uh, help with the UN Sustainable Development Goals, and, and some of those are on the left, uh, uh, hunger, uh, health, uh, education, and affordable and clean energy. So there are many, many uh, technologies that uh, can, can uh, from the uh, light sciences that really play a, a key role from uh, the LEDs that allow, the blue LED, which actually allowed white, cheap white light and affordable uh, white light uh, in many remote communities around the world to water purification. Uh, there's uh, spectroscopy of food, food security and safety, et cetera. So, uh, and not to mention just uh, uh, full of the takes and, and also just making uh, lighting energy efficient, urban gardening. There's a whole host of uh, wonderful uh, approaches and, and uh, uh, to to uh, for light sciences to help with society and, and we're trying to celebrate all those things uh, during this day every day every year uh, on May 16th. So uh, finally, I, I just want to say that we've got uh, every year we've had a message from the Director General of UNESCO, Ms. Audrey Azoulé, and uh, this year is no exception. This is not the the full message. Full message you can go to the UNESCO website. But, uh, but there, this is part of it. And, uh, uh, and again, from the Director General. And so it's a, it's a real uh, privilege and a pleasure that, uh, that she has uh, taken the time to, to write this message. Uh, and you see, she, she's, uh, she says, without light, our planet would be but a cold and barren place. Indeed, where there is light, there's often an abundance of light. Yet light represents even more for humanity. Light goes hand in hand with knowledge. It is a lens through which, which to see and understand the world. And so the, uh, you know, that's the, the idea that light has even more than, than what we, we consider as a scientific uh, uh, enterprise. It actually has a, a metaphorical meaning also for knowledge 
um, and uh, and a lot of other things. So, in, including the artists, the wonderful artists that always show up uh, uh, to our events. So, at any rate, that's a brief uh, brief uh, description of the year of light. That's I'm going to stop sharing. Um, so it's it's been uh, been wonderful um, to do this over the years. So now I, I think we can go ahead with our program. So again, these are sort of best practices. I'd, I'd like to introduce the first speaker unless anybody has a question. Um, uh, so at any rate, the uh, first speaker is Dr. Imrana Ashraf. Um, actually, it turns out that Imrana was the first Pakistani woman to do her PhD in quantum optics. She's a professor in the Department of Physics at Qadi Azam University in Islamabad. Uh, and I've known Imrana for many years. She's uh, been here uh, at the ICDP Optics College, uh, starting out as a tutor, but then eventually she was also lecturing uh, in, in what we, we call the, uh, the preschool, which is a, a school which allowed uh, some students to, uh, to kind of gear up for the college. And it was a very important function. Uh, uh, Imrana is a senior member of Optica, uh, senior associate at the, at the ICDP, She's the recipient of the ICO, ICDP Galliano Donardo Prize. Uh, she won the Spirit of Salam Award at ICDP, which recognizes people who act in the spirit of Abdu Salam, the late Nobel laureate. Um, and she's, uh, she's done a number of things with teaching, but especially she's, done, she's been very active uh, uh, in Pakistan in bringing uh, uh, optics educational outreach to, uh, to, to young students in government colleges, schools, not, not necessarily the private schools, but really the public schools, and especially in the remote areas, and, uh, and especially for women uh, as students. So, uh, so at any rate, it's been, it's been wonderful uh, working with Imrana, and she's going to describe uh, some